Thank you once again for joining us here on the Dancing Sober podcast with Rafa. Please take the time to subscribe here on YouTube. Um, It's really important for this channel and the growth of this um, podcast. If you're listening on the audio platforms, please take the time to comment and rate. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Movita Juice Bar. Go to movitajuicebar.com and see their locations. There might be one around you. They have about 15 different locations in the LA area. Um, You can also order through your food apps. Today's guest is none other than the drummer, the magnificent musician, Mr. Alfredo Ortiz, AKA Fredo. Let's get into it. Welcome once again to the Dancing Sober Podcast with Rafa. And today we have a special guest, a homie from back in the days. Give it up for the magnificent Alfredo Ortiz, a.k.a. Fredo, a.k.a. Bongaloid. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good Devo song. So so we... uh, we just walked in here. We just um, set this up, and we're just gonna like get started and just jump into it. And um, but let's start with like getting to know you a little bit. Like, where'd you grow up, Gardena, and and stories about? I grew up in a couple different cities. I was uh, born in Paramount. Okay. Uh, parents bought a house in Gardena because my grandma lived in Compton. My mom wanted to live close. But the other, the other side of that was I could have lived in Alhambra because. Next to my uh, dad's best friend's house, they were selling a house, and I was closer to his mom's house in Lincoln mm-hmm. Heights, but they chose Gardena. So I grew up in Gardena, Compton. Uh, my mom was a school teacher and taught at the uh, El Rancho School District in Pico Rivera. And yeah, yeah. So she was my bus from Gardena all the way from uh, preschool to what? Yeah. Six, six, my mom lives right next to the El Rancho Middle School. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to go to uh, El Rancho High School, but. Somebody uh, recommended to my folks that um, their son was going to Bosco Tech. Oh, you went so to Bosco Tech. So then all of a sudden I found myself from Gardena all the way going to Rosemead. Wow. You know, and, 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 and getting to know all that area. And, and uh, But, you know, at the end of the day, it always came back to Gardena. You yeah, know, and, yeah, yeah. and I was young, so I really didn't know the scene. But as I grew into the music scene and yeah. growing older, I find that there's a lot of people from the South Bay that I ended up working with you know, in that near future. Yeah, you were one of the first people that I met when I started to hang around the music scene, and that was thanks to Marcel Hernandez, yeah. who like, was kind of like my Nino back then. When I met him, he was like, hey, Rafa, let's go here. Hey, let me take you here. Let me take you there. You know, That's cool. Taking me like all kinds of places and like learning about the music scene and things like that back then. And um, I know that you have a, also a project with Marcel. Uh, East LA Taiko. Yeah, yeah, one of the homies, right? So, yeah. and uh, tell me a little bit about like, getting involved with that well let's just go back to like the music scene and getting into I it i mean I, out of so i i mentioned that i was going to school in rosemary i went to bosco tech and i stuck with the band i was always in band you know throughout school and always drums yeah you know, always drums concert band and i always gravitated to the drums you know i think wanted guitar lessons and my mom got me guitar lessons but yeah. i quickly got bored of it i was like i don't want to yeah. do that and there was a drum pad in the corner and i'd walk over to the teacher would leave I walk over to the drum pad and start messing with it. He come back. He's like, "Get back on the guitar, play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, whatever." You know. <laughs> and I was like, "Nah." I went to my mom. I was like, "I want, I want, to play, I want drums." You know. So yeah. every, you know, my mom would put me in the school program and whatever concert band they had, I was always on drums. Nice. Whatever bass drum, timpani, you know. And by the time I got to the high school, it, it was uh, they had a marching band, and it was a jazz band and concert band. So they had everything, you know. And so I went gravitated to the drums of course yeah. and you know it was marching a mile and in parades around town and uh, your belinda wherever yeah, you know yeah. it's just like and um that i mean that's pretty much where i got a lot of my like theory and schooling you know was those you know four four or five years did ago. you know that you were gonna like jump into like being in bands or i didn't know it was a, it was all you know unfolding as i went yeah. you know in high school you start meeting people that have the same interests you know and yeah. I, I the kids that i grew up my friends that i grew up with on the block you know were different from the people that i met in high school and they yeah. were all from pomona and whittier and all those areas so yeah. it it was, it was a, a different shift you know in the way people grew up what they thought about what they were listening to what they were yeah. you know into you know 
that's a trip that you grew up in like so many different like con with with so many differences to connections uh of the city different parts of the city different connections and then like you um ended up in the original like um grouping of like Oza Motley, right yeah and, and, yeah and bands like that what was the name of that that center that you guys used to always the peace and justice the peace center. and justice yeah, center. Yeah. yeah so like that's when i was like barely i went there once okay. like right before it shut down that's when i was barely like starting to learn about the music scene yeah. and stuff like that and um did you go to that one house party um where was it that Maceo threw? It was in. I think it was a house. probably and, it. I don't you know, know. It was like a two-story house, and they, uh, um, they were gonna uh, play it live on KPFK. And all be, that. I have, <laughs> I have such blurry one. memories. It was one of those, those nights. Days, yeah, it, it was a fun, fun um, game. But I mean, before Ozo was Yeska. Yeah, you know, exactly. and, and that's when I, I started. Gonna... You know, pretty much. I mean, that band came out of Bosco yeah. Tech. You know that. Really? Yeah. Oh, sure, that I band, that. and then me being introduced to Los Lobos. Yeah. Their son, one of their sons, you know, Louis Perez's son, yeah. went to Bosco Tech. So it's oh, like, okay, that's the I, it, my musical like path like was still out of high school. Like you know, yeah. I, I didn't know that it was going to be a musical path, but I kept meeting people who were just like, oh, you, hey, badass on the drums, yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. all right, cool, this, this thanks, play, you know. <laughs> you know. I actually saw you guys. I saw Yeska mm -hmm. when you guys opened for Tito Puente. Mm -hmm. At the House of Blues. House of Blues. Yeah, I was there. He, he gave me a compliment that night. I was like, I was kind of like frozen. Ah. You know? and he was like, he sounds good, man. I was like, oh, man. I was Bro, like, that energy that old folks like that bring, right? I mean, yeah. there's like this presence and energy that just a few words from someone like that is like, Poof. I got like, that. It's like from a ball of fire. Um, Quincy Jones Damn. at the Montreux Jazz Festival. The Beastie Damn. Boys were playing, and he was there with the guy who, who put on the Montreux Jazz Fest. I forget the guy's name, but you know, and. <laughs> they were watching us playing, and you know, I, I walk in between the set. I would walk me and Money Mark would walk yeah. up, you know, and take a break. Yeah. And he grabbed me by my arm. He's like, "Sounds damn good, son." I was like, "Yeah." Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Went back. I'm never gonna stop. <laughs> I'm never gonna stop. But what year was this? Uh, with Quincy Jones was that 2007, okay. and then what Tito Puente was what like was that early 2000, 99, yeah, 90, something like that. No, I was early like 90s, 90s, late 90s. Yeah, yeah late it had 90s. to be late 90s. Celia Those Cruz too. We was slower, opened up for War there and Celia Cruz there too. Um, like it started, we broke away from like what a trajectory that, though. Like the right. stuff that you've been in, and and even like uh, the one that I always tripped out on when I was looking at the credits was when I saw your name on the Tenacious D album. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, oh boy, it was getting. And, that, and that's connect being connected to the Beastie Boys circle, you know, and, and the 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 Dust Brothers, who you know, wow, that's amazing. You yeah. know, who produced a lot yeah. of hip hop in in yeah. LA, Paul's and Boutique, like, Paul's Boutique, yeah. and you know, and they, I think it was one night they're like, hey, you got your percussion. You know, there was a, a boathouse uh, studio over in like kind of Silver Lake area, yeah. and um, I just took my stuff there. They had already recorded the rest of the band, and yeah. I was just, you know, I was, I'm always throwing on the salt and pepper, right? Yeah. And little did I know that it was going to be that album, and you know, it it's a trip, bro. Just um, like seeing all these different things that you've been involved with, and like always, like the chill homie, like when you're out and about, you know, it's not like you don't. You never lead with that when, when people are going like, hey, what's up? I'm the drummer for the Beastie Boys. Right, right, right. It's not something. And so it's it's a trip that um, like when you have this great talent and and uh, you can just chill inside it. You don't have to like, you know, have it like as a Put badge out or anything like that. Yeah. You don't know? you know? <laughs> <laughs> but you've always been like this, just this chill, chill, chill. And, that, and that comes from being around good people like you, yeah. you know, who, who give off that same vibe, you know, it's just like, if you can find people that, you yeah. know, you can relate to that way, then yeah, you're yeah. going to be chill, you know, and I think the first time I met you, I don't know if you were already, I don't know who you were playing with back then and mm -hmm. all that, but um, I, I met your dad first, I okay. think, yeah, yeah, because of a of a show or something, I, all because of the theater company that I was in, okay. I was working with his um youth center, he had a youth center, or yeah, I think, right? yeah, 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 I, I didn't put those things together till after I remember. Is that at the YMCA once. in Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I mentioned this to you once. So I was like, oh, I knew your dad won this. And then I, I later found out. That yeah, my pops was involved with the communities. Yeah. You know, I mean, all, all these years, he's just always been trying to start programs, you know, yeah. for the gente and the kids. Yeah, and, yeah, you know. yeah. Was that something that um like also inspired you to always like, do like the nonprofit stuff or like you know the not necessarily man, how I, many I, charity events do right. you play you know <laughs> and I, I think i think in that in that line i mean i i you know i was conscious of it but then as far as you know organizing or you know trying to you know i think i just went in as okay i'm 
yeah. I got to go play music, you know, and, and if yeah. I'm able to play music and make that person smile or at least, you know, raise some money for this yeah, and yeah. I'm all for it, you know, I'm yeah. not going to be like, are we getting paid? I mean, you know, it's nice to get paid for yeah, your work, you know, but when you're doing it for other reasons, you know, yeah. it's like in the end, you know, you're making people smile and people dance yeah. and like, you know, I look, as, as long as they're dancing, I'm like, okay. I'm it's kind of like my thing. It's like you do it just to do it or you do it because there's a need for it. You do it because it's for like exploding reason, inside for, for of you, For every right? reason there is, man. And, but it. then if like, if people are making money off of it, <laughs> right. then, right, then right. you know, it's then like, well, get, wait a minute. Like you can't all like, make hey, money without me. Back like, up. Yeah, back there has up. to be. That's where like. I, definitely my, my parents being involved that way because my, my mom was a school teacher and like, you know, it's like that push to you know support your community you know yeah. and know who you are know where you come from and yeah. know what the possibilities are and the endless possibilities you know and i think you know i could have gone every direction you know it's like i had you know gang life in in my family i had yeah. you know it was like i grew up with it all i understood it all i yeah. went chicano wedding band sitting on yeah. the back watching the drummer you know and hearing him play you know what, yeah. like you know uh, rick james and not rick james yeah you know it's like <laughs> growing up with that and having that culture around me you know it really shapes you and you know these days there's little of that you know so mm -hmm. the kids growing up you know unless their parents are kind of like pushing that on them or not pushing you, it on but at least exposing them to that you know do you do you recall a moment or was there like a year or a specific time when you were like damn this is what i'm gonna do like i don't i don't need um, to get a job i'm gonna do this well the beastie boys was definitely you know the the, the step where i was just like oh this is like a huge step and that <laughs> I'm, I'm going from like you know we're we're selling out the whiskey or the roxy or you know mm. and, that, and that's cool you know we did what big top locals you yeah, know yeah. and, uh, and that, that was badass, yeah. that, that was that was big for us because we didn't yeah. we didn't even get to play on the stage or like at the end you know they were like oh sorry guys <laughs> you either get 15 minutes on the stage or you guys can open up in the front yeah, yeah. we're like let's open up in the front and they wouldn't let people in the in the concert hall yet so we had that whole crowd like wow was excited and excited and we, yeah, we yeah. pumped them up and you know yeah. we're like oh okay and even then like it started started to grow oh we're making records oh we're you know people are interested in helping yeah, us yeah. you know they're going to invest in us but it was the beastie boys i was like oh okay i'm this is where it can be the, yeah. this is where i can get to yeah. well, I'm, well i'm there yeah, yeah, shit yeah. what do i do with this and i what did i do with this there's not more much i could do other than to f fulfill my job and then come back and when i came back it was Oza Motley, it was yeska but all those bands villains we were always playing you know, yeah, so yeah. I, never, I never like it never stopped for me, you know, yeah. so to, to think about, you know, where I was. So I it, I guess that proved that I could be up here and get fed. And here you go. What do you need? You need a tea yeah. back to like uh, setting my shit up and like, Lighters. you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> packing up the car that and, you, know, like, you grub. know, getting that hour <laughs> buffer to get through traffic, you yeah, know, yeah. from Gardena to L.A., you know, uh, it's like playing 50 bucks or whatever <laughs> it took. You know, it's like, how did um, how did your connection to the BC Boys come up? I know that. I imagine that it was through Money Mark somehow, and and um, when they were in Money Mark or something, and then uh, Arturo from Very Be Careful. Oh yeah, I learned later because he was he was friends with Mark, or there was a connection through them. Mm. And Mark went to go see them play. He he was playing bass for a band called Monk, mm. and we were playing at the Nova Express Cafe in mm. Hollywood, across from Cantor's. Okay. And then the villains, my punk band, was playing before them, so we played, got my stuff. I was walking out. And then um, Money Mark offered to help help me, you know, with my stuff. And I was like, no, I'm cool, bro. Let me, let me get out of it. Yeah. I got beers in the car. Like, I got, <laughs> I got, I got to get this in. But, you know, he he, he said, hey, I, uh, I heard you play percussion. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, but I also played kid. I wanted to sell myself yeah. as, a, as a drum set. But I was learning through Yes Guy. And, you know, they were like, hey, get your – my dad bought me timbales. So credit yeah. to my dad for, Damn. you know, supplying me, going yeah. like, here, learn this, learn this, yeah. learn this. And I'm like – what am I going to do with two toms and a cowbell? I don't know yeah. what to do. And all of a sudden, I'm like, ding, 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 ding. And then, yes, and everybody's like, the timbalero. And I was like, yeah. gosh, hey, can you play on this? Can and then Beastie yeah. Boys was like, can you play these songs? And I've been listening to those records, so yeah. I had an idea of what to play. What year was it? So that was, what, ni end of 95? Okay. That I met him, and it was 96 that I, I think it was like January, February. End of December, it was like summertime in Australia. We went to Australia and played. They had already summer. recorded... Uh, that was uh, Hello Nasty time. Okay. Hello Nasty. Oh, no, wait. That was the end of Ill Communication. Sorry. Yeah. So I was finishing off the Ill Communication tour. Damn. And, um, and it wasn't until 98 that, you know, the next record came out and they asked me to go along. And then that was my first world, you know, yeah. arena tour. I was like, oh, shit. All right. Here we go. What a trip. You know, but. Those are know. the same years that I started to mess around with Slow Riders and all that. So yeah. <laughs> I was like. Yeah. 
big touring. And we played a lot of shows together, you know, and Yeska yeah. and Ozo, and yeah, yeah. I remember those days, man. Back in the days with Maceo. What a trip, bro. So, Money Mark bringing you in the mix, and were you around like any of the um like the times when they were just like experimenting, trying to make new songs and stuff, or were you strictly a tour drummer? I was strictly the tour drummer, and it wasn't until 2007 that I recorded my first record with them. But it, you know, it's understanding, you know, the way bands work. Yeah. You know, they had a formula, you know, and and it, it wasn't to say that I knew any more or less. They just had their program, you know, yeah. and they'd go in, they bust it out, and um, I mean, there, w- there was a time when Mark was like, "Hey, you you might come in and." play you might not you know you don't, yeah. don't don't get too excited you know he was yeah. he took me under his wing man he, he took yeah. care of me you know and i love I, that guy too He's you know us, i was yeah. 20 years old you know and yeah. here i had already been doing it for so long yeah, and yeah. and here i am like green to it all but yeah. you know he was guiding me along the way you know and i learned about recording i learned about touring i learned about you know through yeah. him you know watching him and wow. you know everything he showed me and then at the same time he's like hey i got this gig yeah. You know, can you do it? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's like, okay, the manager's going to call you. Manager calls me and he's like, oh, by the way, do you have a passport? And I was like, what's a passport? What? <laughs> what's a passport? They're like, wait, you don't have a passport? Shit. Okay, we, we got to call the federal building. Let me call you back. And I had to go to the federal building wow. and expedite a passport and the whole uh, bit, man. And it was just in my mom. And I went home and I told my parents, you know, I was still young enough to be like, hey, can I do this? You know? <laughs> <laughs> my mom was like, hell no, you're not going anywhere. You're going to finish school, and then, then you can go tour and yeah, do it. Yeah. I was like, but this is kind of what I've been this doing. The Beastie and, Boys, yeah. <laughs> and it's the Beastie Boys. And my dad's like, let him go. If it, you know, yeah, if yeah. he can't handle, then, you know, you go back to school and um, do his thing, you know. And, but it took off, man. What are, what are some, like, some good, like, insights to, like, touring with these guys? I mean, every band is different. Yeah. You know, and, and, and every level is different. And when there's... I mean, you weren't in their like license to ill era where they no, were like and insane. I, and, I, and I got to see them <laughs> at the Greek theater when they were that in that area uh, area era. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was the Raising Hell tour. Yeah. I still have the tour book. I I went to that at the Greek, right? Yeah, at the Greek. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. they came out and they did just three songs or something. For Some, I don't know. They, I think maybe it was a different one because this one oh. they, this time they had the cages and the whole okay. I didn't see that thing on stage. I saw them come out and they did three songs of Paul's Boutique. Oh wow! During so the Run DMC then. show. It was Run DMC and Public Enemy, and they came yeah. out and did just three songs. But, um, but the tour life, like with these oh, guys, yeah. and uh, like being a tour drummer, like you know, I mean, it's, it's like, how is that? Like the the relationship between like a band and and um, you know, like, well, I, I, yeah, separating all, separating all, right? Yeah. It being your job, now being your job, yeah, and then yeah. being you know affiliated, and now. You know, I leave my friends at home that I really want to do this with. I'd rather be, you know, yeah, sh- sharing hotel rooms with them, you know, than yeah. whatever. It's like, you know, I didn't have to. Sometimes I had to share rooms, but I wanted to do this with my friends, right? Yeah. I wanted the villains. I wanted yes, God, whatever. We were all, you know, Ozo was about to. They did, you know. Yeah. When I I left Ozo, like, I still remained with the BC Boys, and Ozo took off. You know, yeah. they went on that Deftone Warp tour and. Never look back, you know. And then I trip out. I'd be like, yeah. be like, man, what, what if I hadn't made that decision? What, yeah. You know, that that was another part of you know being in groups and being hired, and yeah. you know now being that gun for hire. It's like, well, what do I do? Where do where do all my chips fall? What's yeah. gonna benefit me? And I never thought I'd had to think about any of that. You know, I just wanted to play, and bro. You're the you're the guy. <laughs> you're the man. You know, you know? and, and I just I just whatever I was a part of, I just felt it. I think I internalized whatever was in front of me. You yeah, know, yeah. whether it be punk rock, whether it be Ska, yeah. jazz, you know, cumbia, whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, I just okay. This is where I gotta be. This is where my head's at. How do you even keep track of all the bands that you've like? By now, with? it's I, <laughs> <laughs> too many hashtags. I was like, what, what other one? Right. What other one? I should write this down. I think the Wikipedia needs to be updated too. <laughs> what about your baby, the Bongaloids, or just Bongaloids? You know, I've seen you do that with a band and also by yourself. Yeah. So, like, what is Bongaloids? I mean, Bongaloids is me and my attempt to, you know, do what I learned from Money Mark, you know. Mm. He, I think the keyboard repair album that he yeah. put out, I wasn't there for it, but from what he tells me, you know, at night he was in his closet with a tape machine and a microphone. And you hear some of those songs and it sounds like he's really close to the microphone because yeah. he's like, I was trying to be quiet. I was trying to finish my record, you know. He did yeah. th- 30 songs, two minutes each, and it was all, each song was a gem, you know. And like, <laughs> So I was like, oh, well, if you could just sit in the closet and just, yeah. you know, at least get a good sound, you can create it. So then that was me trying to, like, 
you know, I want to play guitar, you know, yeah. I'm going to be bass, you know, bass and keyboard. And, you know, my dad also pushed piano on me, pushed guitar. Mm-hmm. On me. So I would try it. But the, what my brain got immersed in was drums and rhythm, you know, and mm. heartbeat, you know. And But, um, yeah. At, at this point, do you still like, um, I mean, I know that as an artist like you're always like looking for new things new discoveries so like at this point like as a established drummer that's a, like a gun for hire that people want where do you go to find new things or to find like um you know like that inspiration mm-hmm. of like damn i want to learn that or damn right. I, I don't know that rhythm or well you know being immersed in social media mm. videos of everything <laughs> pops up right and everybody's sharing something 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 and you know there's one do you just dust pick? to digital and you know that that's inspiring but i i don't go search for it i dust think because i'm so digital. i'm so involved you know that yeah. there's a point mm. that you stop you know exploring you yeah. know because you're so involved with what you're doing or what you need to do or what you're hired to do you know and and for my own project going back to bongaloids it's like i wanted to continue that i should have been putting out records every year and i see how you know to to work at it and actually start making it move for you you got to do it on a constant level Mm. but i have to go to work so the time Mm. that i come home like i would love to just be like i'm gonna lock myself in the studio and Mm. you know boom but that's not me i want to go home and turn on netflix and just chill (laughs) like spend time with the baby and spend time (laughs) with my baby you know and then she's number one so i'm just like oh man like like where do i find that you know inspiration i think it's just being out and being around others and you know and it doesn't even have to be music you know how has that affected you now as far as like touring and having a baby at home like how does that affect you like do you ever bring her along and i've been grateful for everything that's come my way and you know to balance that you know and to thank her mom for you know being around and like i i see every angle of that you know and being you know a single parent is hard you know so you need that help and you know and you know there was a point in time i was like oh wow am i gonna have to quit this to you know survive and support and you know and i've been blessed with you know so many good people around me and that people like the opportunity kept on coming you know i mean there's times where you're just like damn what's gonna happen you know what you know i gotta go look for a job i started working amazon you know (laughs) during the pandemic you did yeah oh i got no tours there was no tours you know and i was like i was like okay what's what can i handle i'm like oh that's a that's a challenge to go be delivering all day like it'll keep me active and you know, it actually was keeping me active and, you know, lost wow. some weight from it. And, you know, yeah. it was up in the morning. It was only weekends, though. It wasn't like yeah. full on yeah. weekly. That that would wear me out. You know, yeah. my age, I'm like, nah, forget it. I mean, just the Saturday and Sunday was enough. What but, you know, and that I was doing that. And then on top of that, I was I set up my studio in my garage, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like people were calling me. I was doing sessions from home, you know, and mm-hmm. it wasn't a lot, but there was enough that it kept me kept me occupied kept my mind yeah. occupied you know so the balance of life and music was still there yeah, yeah. and then now you know fast forward i'm working with los lobos yeah. i was working with gogo bordello and we go out for a month or two months at a time yeah. be in europe you know and yeah. when i was doing that sasha was growing up so she had no idea my yeah. daughter yeah. and so now she's like dad you're leaving again i'm like oh shit you know like yeah i'm, I'm going back, but i'll be back i'll be back uh, on sunday you know it's like yeah. i'm with, with the new schedule i'm able to be home during the week oh, you know and spend time yeah, and those levels don't tour that hard you know <laughs> i mean they do they do they, they but, do i mean it, it's not months at a time but yeah. we you know we, we've got and i'm just saying because they they they're like, heat those now you know yeah man they're still they're how old are cooking they? ass man oh, yeah uh, what late 60s somewhere around there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah, those guys they're, they're awesome. kicking ass. I mean, to be a part of that, I mean, I, so oh, of course, you yeah. know, I, I mean, we skip all that, but it's like being a part, being around them. They were another influence on top of Money Mark. Yeah. You know, that was my friend's dad, and I got to be at those shows. I got to be backstage yeah. at the Greek Theater and just kick it. You know, we yeah, were, yeah. you know, to my parents, it was like, oh, we're gonna go see Los Lobos. For me, it was like I'm just gonna go kick, kick it backstage, my homie, yeah. kick it with my homie. You know, <laughs> but the you look, had an insight to the world, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that that whole influence, I was just preparing me for everything that I've been doing. You know, all these what a years. Trip, dude. Just a trip that like. You know, you're a drummer and you have a friend whose dad is in Los Lobos. Right. You know? <laughs> and if that turns out, I think my dad hired them back in the day to do some wow. fundraiser fundraisers at Cal State LA. When when they wow. f- when the time that my fam- they finally like 
Can, like bring your parents parents uh, back. So we were at the Greek Theater, one of those Lobo shows, you know. Uh, and, and I see them start talking, and I'm like, oh shit, oh, you guys know, know each that. other already. Like, <laughs> from back in the day, I was like, all right, it's you know the connections have been, you know, it. I couldn't I couldn't explain to you how yeah. you know how how it just all came around, you know, and I'm a part of it. I'm like, oh shit, all right, cool. How about like um, as a music composer, have you ever like thought about or done any work like um for film or? No, I've always wanted to. Like I think um, maybe I haven't discovered it, but I want to know if I have like a short attention span or something like that, where it's mm. just like too. I, to, I think if I had a project that I needed to focus on and work on, mm. then I would dedicate that time. But I haven't had that, so I don't have the experience, but I would love to. Yeah. And I think I'm constantly like, I think you were asking me about bongoloids earlier, where it's like I, I, I create on my iPhone, there's GarageBand, and I'm yeah. there hitting keys i'm in the air you know five hour airplane <laughs> ride and i'm and i make songs up and i name it whatever city i'm in or if yeah, i'll be awesome. on a drive for three hours and I'll, so i've been creating all this content but now it's like all right i got to get it off my phone and put yeah. it out there which is my next move so it's like it's a process man as, yeah. as you know like putting something together it's like it doesn't yeah. come quickly and yeah. it takes time and you know and but you have to put that effort and it's like okay i put some effort in but then i now i got to go travel you know, and then the travel, I mean, even though the, like, come home during the week, yeah. I get home and I, I need two days recovery, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, oh yeah, you know, flying and all that. Speaking of taking time and long times to, like, put things together, isn't there an East L.A. Taiko album somewhere out there? there yeah, there <laughs> is. It's, you see it right there? You just got to pull it off the shelf. No, we, uh, we we did we did record, we did some stuff with uh, Quetzal, and, um, and then I think we're continuing to record and... I mean, even Maceo, you know, he's been uh, putting together uh, some uh, taiko classes over in, in downtown L.A. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think it's called the Budokan. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like a theater there, but um, we're getting it together. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing. It's like I always feel bad, like from the villains to Yeska. It's like when I would leave, I'd leave, right, and I'd be immersed mm -hmm. in whatever I was doing. But I come back, I'm like, oh, we got to – we got to get to work too, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I detach, I get That's to detach tough. from, from yeah. my regular life, you know, when you're on tour, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and you come back, you're like, oh yeah, I got all this other stuff I want to do. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of content that needs to be released in the next couple of years, yeah. you know, and especially East LA Taiko and Bongaloids. Is, is it and, difficult to like ignite that fire again? Cause you know, I mean, there's like a fire that starts. No, it. it's, it's that thing where it's like, you've already you've already been there right you've already yeah. done it so when you revisit it's just a matter of just you know warming up and getting back into it you know and yeah like i think yeah yeah did you also play with the lisa flores band yeah on, on, yeah, on see, flores, right? yeah i think um so for so many years we played alongside each other and then um she asked me to play with her like in 2005 six something like yeah. that we started playing at Eastside Love and yeah, doing yeah. like a, a weekly there. Oh, okay. You know, and started that relationship with her where, you know, recorded on some of her yeah. tunes and stuff. And, you know, it, it was another another expanding umbrella of musicians that I was meeting in L.A. Yeah. and getting to play with and getting to, you know, share talent with, you know. And it's awesome, you know. So right now you're with Los Lobos. Right now I'm with Los Lobos, right. And uh, what, what do you see in, like, the future for you? Any other... I want to, I definitely want to uh, get on some bongoloid stuff, you know, and, and um, I just, I think the plan is to release everything that we got, you know, because yeah. people need to hear it, you yeah. know, it's no good on a hard drive. <laughs> no, it's no good on my, my iPhone, you know, and, and what, what is, what's the, like, what's the genre that bongoloids is? Cause it, uh, well, that first record was every, everything, everything yeah. that I liked, everything that I grew up with, which it was all alternative, which was just fun. electronic. Yeah. You know, yeah. It was just fun. You know, yeah. Oh, I'm going to do a vocoder on this one. Cause yeah. I like zap, you know, and like, you know, and <laughs> I'm going to do this one. Cause I like the band tortoise and it's going to be a long instrumental with cool percussion, you know? Okay, and, yeah, yeah. and then I like jawbreaker. So I'm going to do like a jawbreaker song, yeah. and Foo Fire, whatever, you know, it was just, it was all coming out of me and I didn't know how to choose. I didn't know the process. I just, yeah. I went to a friend of mine, Rick Keeler, who helped me produce it. Yeah. And um, he, um, I think everything, every idea that I came up with, he was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And it just became its own song. So when I put the album together, I was, my dad was at one time was like, oh, pick a theme, pick a, pick something that you want to talk about. And mm -hmm. I couldn't really yeah. come down to that decision. And I'm I was like, you know what? Same way. I'm so all over the place that yeah. here it is. It's all over the place. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, stuff, you know, I but I, that. like I, you know, I, I, dream about doing kind of like a 
a Latin jazz thing, you know, yeah, but yeah. mixed in with other influences. Like yeah. doing, about doing another rock record. I want to do electronic. Like I love yeah. all that stuff, you know, drum and bass and whatever. That's it's hard to f it's it's hard take to a focus, big chunk right? of time and then just plan it out. Yeah. Uh, and just dive, you know, for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, got, I got the setup at home. Like today I was messing around. Yeah. You know, I, I was like, and I, I don't, I was like, oh, my friend, uh, this guy, Paul E, he, had, he made these drums out of wood, really nice, you know, and I was like, oh, I need to make a video for him, so I started yeah. filming the video, I was like, well, what if, what if I just record myself and do an actual tune, and then I put my bass on, and I started doing the bass line, and then that, I forgot about finishing that video and went forward <laughs> to just now writing the tune, going like, oh, I like that bass line, oh, yeah. this is going to be something else, yeah. like it went from that to like, okay, now this is going to be a part of the archives, you know, yeah. like, you know, we need, to, we need to make that one blossom, you know, so <laughs> it comes, it comes in waves, you know. Yeah. What a trip. Um, do you ever just sit down and just like, just start drumming and like songs? You mean you write songs that way or do you? The Bangladesh you... record was kind of like that where I, I just, I was thinking up of a song in my mind, but humming it in my head, but playing yeah. the parts to it. So recording the parts. So there's no music yeah. that I'm playing to. It's all in my head, <laughs> you know? And, and then, and then I got to recreate that. Yeah. you know and which it happened you know I, I was able to do that you know it wasn't the normal process and i've been around so many bins that you yeah. know i see them the writing process and start with the vocal you start with the guitar or yeah. both you know and that was yeah i went backwards this is backwards yeah because <laughs> i mean that's where you're at <laughs> yeah <laughs> what is um what is like uh i mean i always think it's so difficult for musicians to like make a living right i mean definitely for example yourself who's definitely a successful drummer in everybody's eyes uh very well established and accomplished etc and and it's still difficult so oh, like yeah. how yeah. how like or like what kind of what can you say to like young um peeps out there just you know starting to pick up drums starting to feel like i'm gonna do this for a living like fuck, where do you fucking even start to like tell a kid like well I guess the only thing you can say is play as much as you can, right? right. <laughs> but I mean, that, that, that doesn't help the business end of that it. That doesn't help the business end, but I guess it's definitely, as we've all, you know, I mean, it's everybody's individual experience is their own, and you find ways to help support your art, you know, but I never had a backup, you know? I never mm -hmm. had that backup funding. I had support. I had my parents at an age where I needed that support, you know, and... Maybe I started to you know get a job after a year out of high school mm -hmm. and knew what it was to work, but it was it wasn't enough for me to like get work ethic. You know, I knew what it was yeah. to work in a studio and work and go practice at with my band. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but you know, going back to Amazon, I was like, oh, damn, I got to go to an interview and you know they're training and I'm watching all yeah. these videos, answering multiple choice questions. I'm just like, I'm like uh. this is this is kind of <laughs> messing me up here, but I need to do it. I'm smart enough. I'm, I could do this. Yeah, I yeah. could do this. And you know, they're like, you're hired. I'm like, awesome. Amazon, here's your package, here's your package. <laughs> but um, ha definitely having a backup, man, of some kind of financial support, you know, in order yeah. to support your art. Because, but then hopefully that you get to that point where you can be supported by your own art, yeah. you know. And I think for me, writing records is, a, is an important thing because, you know, there's syncing and there's all that world, you know, putting yeah. things in movies or someone going like, I love this piece, can you write it for my movie i see everybody else doing it i've recorded on you know like soundtracks that. and yeah. stuff like um yeah, there was one no sudden move that just came out mm -hmm. with uh, john Cheadle. but i uh during pandemic we recorded the the soundtrack of it okay uh, i forgot the the guy that was the actual um, musical director the guy from ireland he did oceans 11 i'm spacing on his name right now but <laughs> it was a funny thing that i i was on the plane i was like oh, i'm gonna watch this movie and then I heard like little like little wood blocks and, <laughs> like, and that's I'm mean. like I'm like no not even not yet no. I was just like I'm like what's that generic like wood block like <laughs> percussionist in the back you know and I'm like oh wait this is the shit that we did oh I'm the generic <laughs> <laughs> wood block guy in the background and your chimes and the and I was like I was like man like I could do I could do this all day if I could you know yeah. you know but I think in that you just gotta had have already been immersed in that world. Yeah. where that's what you're surrounded by you know and i think me being a touring musician pulls me out of that i mean i know a lot of musicians that'll take it on the road and they're just continuing to do from that but i yeah. i guess it's i don't know if, i don't know if i'm not looking for the opportunity or the opportunity isn't in my lap it might be harder for a drummer to take that on i think the road, so right yeah especially as much as i work yeah. and I, I, the calls i get like i mean definitely dry 
periods, you know? Yeah, yeah. But there's always, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, can you do that? Can you do yeah, this? Yeah, I'll be yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just recorded with my friend Abby Travis at Rancho de la Luna and Joshua Tree, you know, yeah. Dave Catching from Eagles of Death Metal and Queens of the Stone Age. They've re- wow. re- recorded there, and my friend Abby, who I used to re- uh, play with and record with in the mid '90s as well. Like out of yeah. out of all that, you know, I joined her band. Like I was just yeah. <laughs> I was I was splitting myself thin, but it was working out, you know. And yeah. but it's like the work is there, you know. And what, what do you think you find more satisfying, if or if is there even a comparison between like being a studio musician and being like a touring musician. There's different worlds, you know, studio mm-hmm. musician, you're being precise, you're perfecting something, uh, live touring that every day's a, a party, not because you're partying, because it's a s- celebration. Mm. You're playing music, you're, people are there to see you and cheer and yeah, yeah, yeah. Wh- however, you know, you can be a, you know, a sad band and be like, oh, I'm <laughs> sad There's with you, I'm you. sad with you. Yeah. And then here like, you know, everybody's like La Bamba, and everybody's like Screw La Bamba. Yeah. We want to play some other, <laughs> you know, we want to play Just the Man, you know, and just uh, some yeah. old nice deep dark down blues, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah, dude. It there's magic in all. There's of magic it. in all of it. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like, ha- however, yeah, however you could get that drumstick to the pad, <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> to the skin. I mean, yeah. man, pl- East LA Taiko playing a Taiko drum. I mean, that's the whole thing in itself, you know. And that's not everybody does that. There's you, hardly. Oh any. wait, I forgot that I also saw you in in the play. In <laughs> oh, Blade Blade, Blade to the Heat. Heat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Blade they're about to, to do that again. Yeah. I'm not going to be around for yeah, it. Yeah, they're going to yeah. fucking do it again. That that was something amazing. See, so that's too, even yeah. di- it's all been it's all been an experience, and it's all been like, you know, you. I wish that somebody can get that type of schooling, and the only type of schooling that you get that way is by doing it, by yeah. being it. But but you also have to be like somebody that people can work with. I mean, too, there's some motherfuckers too. that are difficult to work with, and they That's the they, other thing. they make their right. own path. You know, I mean, they can. If, well, I've always been told that I'm I'm easy to work with, and I get along, and, yeah. I, and I've always just wanted to go somewhere and just be happy yeah, and have I just a good time. You know? <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, you know, it's all like, right, I'll do my job. And I, you know, thanks to my parents for you know. Keeping yeah. me humble and you know respectful and like, you know it's just like that's where I it, I show up yeah. to anywhere. I'm just like hello, how are you? You know it's like yeah, yeah. I ain't coming in with like Psh, beastie boy. What's up, dog? <laughs> with the Volkswagen. Yeah, with the Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> I where, can't. I can't do that. It's not me. You know. Like, dope. Where does your um, like, I I want to call it style. I don't know if I'm using but the right words for it. But I mean your style of drumming. Super fucking smooth. Like, um, I I've seen you play different genres as well, mm-hmm. and you're always just, you know, in the pocket chill, <laughs> and you have this like rhythm. Well, of course, like I, I listen to uh, like old Yeska records. Well, we only did a couple, but it's like I I I can hear my. I I I, did, I hadn't learned as much as I should have at that point, but I was at a certain level. And the energy I gave, we gave off live and what we got on record was a great energy, but I can sit there and pick apart my imperfections, right? And yeah, be like, yeah. oh, I should have, you know, worked on this and that would have been smooth. And it wasn't until I worked with Money Mark in one of my, you know, few first recording sessions it was with Mario C at Mario C studio in Cypress Park. And I was doing something on a song and Mark and him came in. They're like, oh, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Don't do any more roles. Stop doing roles. I was like, <laughs> why? You know, they're like, just don't do, just uh, give me time. So I go, yeah. doom, ska, do, doom, ska. And don't do anything else. If you get out of that, then that's it. You're, you're out of here. And wow. I was just like, well, they didn't say you're out of here, but I kind of yeah. felt that way. You know, I was yeah. just like, all right. So then quickly I had to switch that off. Mm. I just go, boom, ska, do, do, ska, do, do. And then he's like, there it is. Pocket, clean. That's all we need. I was yeah. like. So every session that I, you know, encountered after that, I'd come in with that mindset yeah. and just give it, give time, give what's needed. And because of the percussive expression that I did with, with Yeska and the timbales and all that, and then I, and through marching band, all of that was influenced to me to be like, and learning through the guys that were going to PCC, the rest of the Yeska, mm. they were bringing jazz to the studio, you know, and, and comping and soloing. And like, I was learning, all, it was all, mixing it all into one so where that became all of that became my style and then being with louie and the villains learning punk rock and mm. listening to the black flag and circle jerks and whatever you know Minutemen, you know and getting all that 
drumming style. Like that's yeah. a whole other yeah, world, yeah, you know, yeah, bad yeah. religion. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, you know what I'm saying? And grudos, you know, yeah. you know, down to the plugs, whatever, all those yeah. different styles. I'm like, oh, it was just all blending into the one where all the bands that I played with have each used yeah. two or three of those styles down to yeah. Los Lobos. You know, it's like there's a cumbia, there's a blues, there's a rock, there's a, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, well, Zomali, you know, had all that mixture, you know, and Yeska had that mixture. You have you have this smoothness when you're up there, though, bro. Thanks, it's like, man. Thanks, it's really man. nice to watch. Keeping it's time. That's it. Yeah. You know, timing is everything. You know, as long as your time, you, timing's good, then everybody can float in on top and, of that. And, you know? and uh, look at the camera right there and just show them that infectious smile. Because <laughs> you always have. I'm this, always having. You always got that smile up there, and like you know, it's it's just. It, you know, you share it with us, so yeah. it's kind of it's kind of nice to like it's cool. be there in the audience when you're seeing somebody like that have so much fun. Um, right now that you mentioned PCC, I was just like, it's a trip. How many musicians like really came out of that program from yeah. like our era, right? Yep. Yeah. So even like, um, and I wasn't and, even going to Harukuro, class. I was just yeah, sorry. Haru Kuroi and, yeah. and the Kilsonic people, and exactly. And, uh, and then also, I guess, um, uh, did Uli go there? Or yeah, I think yeah. Uli went there. Anton, yeah, Slim. Just a Walter, bunch of people came, and I, and I was kicking it with Walter. He's and like, that was hey, the jazz, the yeah. jazz department, right? Yeah, like Bobby Bradford and yeah, some of, some of the other jazz guitarists, like awesome musicians. I I didn't know any. I should have been a part of that, yeah. but I was already. Well, out you got of it. I know I got, and I was through getting the it homies, through them. Yeah, through them. You know, yeah. I, I would go go see them play, and then Bobby Bradford was like, "What are you doing sitting over there? You you play something?" I'm like, "Yeah." And Anton's like, he plays congas. And he's like, "Get on the congas. You're not nice. just gonna sit in my class and nice, not do anything." Nice, I'm like, nice. "Oh shit! All right." <laughs> cool, you know, and get to be a part that's of it, you know. Badass. You know, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That that yeah, that, that just reminded me of that. I always trip on that that story of the people that came out of that. And I don't know if he's retired now, that professor or that teacher. Maybe I don't even know. I think so. I recently heard something. But um anyways, yeah. So all this navigating like different bands, different people and um continuing to move forward and hopefully like putting together some albums and stuff. What, what um. Do you hope for, now? Like, what is it that, what would you like to do? What would be like your dream next project? Man. I'm kind of. Let's put. I, I'm, 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 what's that? <laughs> Let's put it out in the universe, <laughs> like, like they say. Put it I, out in the universe. I, I, I guess stuff is brewing now because right after this, I'm gonna go. Um, I've been wanting to do a drum thing with. Uh, my drum brother uh, Alex Gonzalez Gonzo, mm -hmm. and he he went to Loxa and he was friends with all those guys and Uli and Dante and you know that whole scene and we connected and you know we've been drumming. He was in Bongoloids. He's an honorary mm. Bongoloids drummer, <laughs> the long list of drummers, you know. And they're all like, "Oh shit, I gotta play for you, the drummer. <laughs> I gotta play your drums." I was like, "I'm like busted, dude." That's but we're be. we're we're about to go in the studio with uh, my homie uh, Cesar Mejia. Okay. And uh, he's, you know, we're we're just we're recording it. I'm filming it. We're playing it. And there's nothing. I don't. We're not coming in prepared. Oh, yeah. Just on the spot. Like here's an idea. Boom. Let's do it. You know. Nice. I think we're uh, we called up uh, Juan Perez, bass player. We're, he's gonna oh, come yeah, in. Yeah. And you know, yeah. last week we did it with uh, my friend Eva Gardner. Wow. You know, she used to she plays with Pink and she used to play with Mars Volta and okay. you know, Hollywood native and you know so it it was cool. It kind of opened up a whole other. We didn't know. What we I was just thinking, oh, this is gonna be for the drummers. But now it's turning into like, oh, this could be something. We can put out an EP. We can, dude. Like you're you know. talking about, like a super band there. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So I, I you know, I, I guess, I guess this is me making stuff happen or trying yeah. to, you know, in, yeah. in the middle of, you know, going back and forth in the middle of podcasts in the yeah. middle of like, all right, well, okay, I gotta go, you know, because uh, at six a.m. I'm gonna be up and let's give it a name right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, Gonzo was saying is uh, Gonzoloids. Gonzo. <laughs> Rafa Lloyds. I like it. Rafa Lloyds. <laughs> the Gonzo Lloyds. <laughs> Dude, that's exciting. So, yeah, you like, know, th things are brewing. I, I mean, I'm always um, thinking about it, but it's just about initiation, you know, and it's, you know, having to find the time to initiate it all. So. Yeah, I mean, that's like, you just set a time, you set a date, and you go for it, and you yeah. start, you know, and, uh, you know, the hardest part, whatever, is the first step, you know. Yeah. Well, that's Cliche today. kind the of eighth. stuff. We're all good for the eighth. We're all good for the eighth. <laughs> all right, cool cliche yeah. stuff but it's true like you just got to get started sometimes and just let the ball start rolling and, sure. and see where it rolls and all that so that's that's fucking exciting because yeah. juan is also one of my favorite bass players to oh, like man, watch he's, he's amazing yeah. so yeah yeah and everybody that you just mentioned sounds fucking awesome so. yeah 
looking forward good, to that. Good players, good people, you know? Yeah. It's like, look, I mean, what you've been talking about. How like, about masters of the something? <laughs> <laughs> masters of the music verse. Music verse, shit. Hmm. What a trip. We'll get the ideas brewing. Maybe, maybe people can, uh, if they're going to be able to comment, you guys can throw some names out. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> comment below. <laughs> comment below names of the band. Yeah. <laughs> for the band <laughs> uh, that's gonna be pretty cool yeah we'll, i'll send them to you cool. so anybody that does comment will send them um, send the names over to go. fredo yeah like a super band or just keeping music going man i, I guess you know everybody is either looking for something to do mm -hmm. or they're already a part of something you know so it's like having the time to find those people and knowing the people that i do and that i've met over the years like it's like why haven't i done it but I don't know. I don't know the answer. Well, the, the answer is me yeah. trying to do it now, you know? The, the, so many years later, but hey, you know, I was late on my record, too. My dad was like, <laughs> by the time you're 30, you should put out a record. I was yeah. like, okay. Um, but it's, it's always like, a, you never know when it's the right time, but when you do it, it's time, you know? Mm -hmm. That's like, it's just whenever you do it. And, you know, as, as we all know, like, time flies, you know? All of a sudden, yeah. we're, all, we're all gray. Are you shit. 40 already? 46. 46, yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm 50 already. Oh, yeah, Maceo <laughs> just had turned 50. Oh, he just turned. I'm to, older to, than Maceo. To, to, to throw to throw that out there, Maceo. Wait, when when was his birthday? I think yesterday or the day before. Yesterday? Oh shit! Oh, I gotta tell him. It was birthday. yesterday. Yeah. So I I'm two months older than Maceo. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Maceo. Happy birthday, bro. He's on his way to San Francisco. Yeah. So he, uh, we're actually yeah. he's gonna come up to the show. Okay. But, uh, Los Lobos are playing in uh, Salinas and Sacramento. Salinas. Salinas. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, get some good uh, food out there. <laughs> um, how's it touring with those guys? And like, in the fact that they're like, you know, decade, decades old, like um, legends, you know, and like legendary for sure, yeah. and nothing's stopping them. I mean, these guys, you know, they're going in the next couple of years. They'll be fifty years old. Yeah. As a band. As a band. As a band, whole band, you know, and that's, that's, I mean, if that doesn't influence you, then yeah. I don't know what, dude. And then, you know, being brown and being Chicano and being yeah. proud of, you know, yeah. the, the people that have paved your way, it's like, <laughs> I mean, Ma Marisol Hernandez, she was in yeah. here, she yeah. was in here a couple of weeks ago talking about, she saw you guys at the Greek. Okay, yeah. Uh, and, and that um, when you guys announced, you know, that you guys have, or that Los Lobos has been in the business for 50 years she was like i got a long way to go <laughs> you know like yeah you guys are babies compared to for like sure what they have yeah and what a trip right just like 50 years and of it's making only been music like 20 and, some for me you know and in, in the biz and yeah. playing and being out like uh, do you think um do you know do you think you have an idea of what this band tonight that you're getting together with is gonna like produce what kind of genre or we we're, we're i'm laying on the side of something funky involving mm -hmm. latin percussion conga timbal um there's really no sp specific you know yeah. idea but that's kind of like the strong point because you know percussion and drums together you just them two by themselves you can you know yeah, yeah. do Go a record like that you know yeah. but you add instruments and like once the bass bass was on there i was like oh it needs guitar what if yeah. i play some keyboard to it like it started blossoming like mm -hmm. that i'm like okay well now, now it needs to go even further from just us just jamming for you know five minutes you know yeah, but yeah. whatever it, you know it's let's put some structure funk, in it funky funky is definitely on the nice. in the forefront of this nice. little project i mean I, originally i was doing it to do like content for youtube and you know my drum companies and this you know this, you know gonzo with we both play for zildjian cymbals you know yeah. we yeah, we're stick companies, and we both use uh, Remo heads, you know, and stuff like that. So it was a good, you know, good matchup, you yeah. know. But now it's turning to nice. more than that, you know. Well, yeah. it could still be that. You could be the know. next Phil Collins, Holmes. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. There you go, the, the cumbia Phil Collins. The cumbia Phil Collins. Where are you guys? Um. Uh, working on this, like what studio? Or? It's uh, uh, it's called Shelter Shelter Studios, the Shelter Studios. Uh, oh, with Cesar Mejia, with Cesar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got his little little, little nook back there in yeah, Boyle yeah. Heights, and man, it, it works. And uh, he was like, "Oh man, both of you guys," because it's a small uh, control room, right? yeah, or yeah. not the control room, but the, the re recording the room. Booth, yeah. And um, I mean, we've 
we squeezed a drum set, a small drum set, and a set of congas and timbales in there. Yeah. And, and he was like, man. I've been in there. It's okay, so fucking then, small. And, he was, and he's, like, he's like, I don't know. A lot of mics might be a bit too much. Everything's going to bleed. But he used very minimal miking, probably about three or four mics, yeah. and played it back. And everything sounds nice and crisp and strong. I mean, that guy knows what he's doing. You know, yeah, he's yeah. done this for you know so many years that it's just like, boom. He, you have an idea. But I get where he, at first, you know, he's like, maybe we can find somewhere bigger. You know, and I'm like, yeah, we can do that. But I was like, you already have cameras set up and like, whatever, like whatever, yeah. however it comes out, like, let's just try it, mm-hmm. you know, and we tried it. And luckily, it, it you know, it worked from the get go. Nice. And I worked for him because I was like, I want you to be happy about what you're capturing, you know, yeah. sonically. And yeah. I mean, we're cool. And when he played it back, I was like, oh, hell yeah. You know, and the <laughs> bass in the mix, I was like, cool. It sounds strong, you know. Oh, that's badass. Wow. Yeah, it was, it's just, yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to play with uh, Juan right now. That's going to be, yeah. <laughs> That's some good energy. That, that, that guy, that guy he, he gives yeah. off some uh, some good uh, juju. Fi- finger, finger juju. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I when we that. did it with Eva, too, man, it was just like, it just came, oh, I'm getting lower. Hey, I'm getting lower. <laughs> hey the hydraulic, hey. <laughs> I broke the hydraulic. So uh, we're down to the last minutes here. And um, I always ask every guest uh, a question, and you can answer. Um, you could take the question any way you want, but try to answer in only one sentence. Okay. And if um, somebody from another world, another planet, or even anybody in this world came up to you and said, Fredo Ortiz, how do you do it? I do it with love and respect. Ciao! <laughs> So let's just tell the people where they can find um, your music, your websites. Uh, Bongaloids is available on Spotify if you listen to Spotify. I know there's a big old like thing with musicians and how much they get paid, but I don't know. I, I I'm guilty for listening and because I want to hear my music right away, <laughs> and you don't have time for CDs. But it's on Spotify under uh, Bongaloids, B-O-N-G-O-L-O-I-D-Z. And um, it's also, um, I don't know if it's on Bandcap anymore. Yeah. Hey, see, this, a these are, I don't have a website. I'm in the process of that. You know, if you, if you, if you can help me on that. I got, yeah. You know, but um, I do have Instagram. I do have Facebook uh, under Fredo Ortiz. Yeah. And um, yeah, Bongaloids. Just look and, them up on Instagram under Bongaloids and under Fredo Ortiz. And um, YouTube, Fredo Ortiz Music. Yeah. Subscribe. And... Um, I just want to say thank you thank for you. coming in and in between your schedule today and all this stuff, but you made it out here and we did it. And it's a uh, pleasure because I've known you for this long and, you know, I, I was ready to, I was like, heck yeah, I'm going to drive down there. And, <laughs> and, Wait, uh, real quick. Yeah, whatever. I remember last year, was it last year you said, hey, I'm starting a podcast. <laughs> you invited <laughs> me to be on mm-hmm. and it never happened. So Well, like, that was me I starting did. to get busy. I had <laughs> I had all this time to think about it. And then all of a sudden, it's like, hey, what are you doing? You want to go on the road? Yeah. I was like, sure. Um, but now here we are. And now here we are, which, you know, it's a, it's a good influence and a good yeah, uh, push yeah. for me to get to that point. You know, Bro, I'm, you're doing a lot. Don't even worry about pushing yourself. Yeah. Just, you know, just do do what you do. And, yeah, yeah, you're good, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> it'll, it'll come. It'll come. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you and good night. Thank you, bro.